Hello! Today we will be exploring different ways of using computations and formulas when uh, creating new columns. So let's uh, create new column by pressing this uh, icon. Uh, alternatively, we can go to Edit, Add New Column. So the dialog appears, uh, which asks us to edit, uh, enter a formula. Uh, so let's see what happens when we just start typing. So that little uh, preview window on the right uh, interactively displays uh, the result. As you know, the columns uh, in DataGrok are typed. So you can either specify the desired uh, type of the result column, and you can see that the type is changing because uh, values are left aligned for strings and right aligned for uh, numbers. Uh, but uh, it uh, auto-detects it pretty nicely, so usually it's safe to uh, say auto-detect. So when we would enter a string, uh, naturally it's a string column. We can try to force it to become an integer, but in this case uh, values are empty because the values are not convertible. Formulas are also supported. It can be something as easy as an uh, arithmetic formula. Or a function. But what's more interesting is uh, when uh, a formula takes uh, a column as a parameter. So to use a column as a parameter, you can uh, drag the column right from the column header. Or uh, you can just enter dollar sign and a little combo box appears uh, prompting you to choose a column. Again, uh, all the values, uh, result values are shown in the preview column. Uh, also, uh, the preview column understands the inputs, so uh, it shows you conveniently all the inputs plus uh, the result. Uh, sometimes uh, you might want to treat uh, numerical columns as uh, strings, uh, for instance, when you're doing some sort of barcode or whatnot. So currently the minus is being treated as an arithmetic sign, but if we change it to string, so now uh, the values were still treated uh, as numbers uh, and the result uh, of the subtraction is converted to string uh, at the end, but that's probably not what we want, and we can tell, uh, treat parameters as uh, strings. In this case, we would see uh, the minus as a minus sign. Just like many other uh, dialogues, uh, this one contains a history icon, uh, and you can see uh, the previously entered values, and you can switch uh, between them quickly. The formula engine understands functions written in any language, so it can be Python, R, Julia, JavaScript, or virtually any other language. So let's take a look at the following example. Uh, below we have several functions defined, uh, body surface area and body mass index uh, written in R, and uh, norm2 function uh, developed in uh, JavaScript. And these are completely user-defined functions. I've just uh, developed them 10 minutes ago. And let's try to use them in our formula engine. So I'm not going to type everything uh, from scratch. I'm going to reuse the history feature. So I've just switched to a formula that uh, involves uh, all three uh, different functions. And uh, we got everything uh, calculated already. Keep in mind that uh, for server-defined functions such as R or Python, uh, the actual execution happens on the server and not uh, in our client, which is a browser. So the data has to be sent there. Uh, yet it's uh, super performant uh, due to our uh, technique uh, called vectorization, where we parse uh, the structure of the formula on the fly and then uh, uh, we execute uh, everything on the backend uh, in a really, really efficient manner. So for this uh, data set of uh, 6,000 rows or something, uh, we do not make uh, 12,000 trips since uh, there are two different formulas, uh, two different functions. But instead, uh, we make only two calls uh, 
uh, which is uh, really, really efficient. Uh, so let's see uh, how it works. It only took us about uh, six or seven seconds. Thank you for listening. In the next video, we will discuss how to create, use and share user-defined functions.